Hey, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to be making a local outline effect in UE5. We are going to be using the overlay material, so unfortunately, if you're using UE4, you can't actually use this effect. But with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Cool, so if we right click and create a material, and let's call this M underscore local outline. And if we double click on this and open this guy up, like this. And if we go all the way over to the left and we set our blend mode to masked and our shading model to unlit so that our outline doesn't affect any shadows. And lastly, if we tick on two sided shading, we'll be good to go. Now to actually create the outline effect itself, we're going to want to push our polygons out from our model. So if we right click and create a vertex normal to get the direction of our polygons, and if we multiply this, by a value. So if we right click here and create a parameter and let's call this outline amount. And just for now, if we set this to four as a default value, and if we chuck this into the waddle position offset, this should push our polygons out. However, this is just going to push them out on top of our existing model. So we kind of need to cut out the existing area that we want to keep. And the easiest way to do that is to right click here and type in two sided sign, one minus this, which inverts it, and just chuck this into the opacity mask. Now what this is doing is essentially deleting anything on the outside of the model and keeping anything in the inside of the model, which you can actually see in this viewport here. And just before we go back into our scene, if we right click and create a three vector, and if we right click on this guy and make this a parameter and call this color, and chuck this guy into our emissive color, we should now be able to control the color on our outline. So if we apply and save and jump into our scene, and if we right click on our material and create an instance, and if we click on one of our actors, let's say this guy here. And if we go into its details and search for overlay, there should be an option called overlay material. If we drag our instance into this guy, you should have an outline. Now, if we open this guy up like this, you should be able to control the color like this and the offset amount. Cool. Now that we have our basic outline, if we jump back into our material and open this guy up, we're going to want to add a little bit of control in here for what happens at certain distances, so that if you're closer to the outline, it can have a different value to when you're really far away from it. So if we jump on over here a little bit, give ourselves a bit of space, we're going to want to get our camera position. So if we get our camera position and we want to get the distance between the camera and the, and the actor's position like this. And we're going to want to remap this. So it's a value between zero and one. So out of the low, if we left click and press one, we can create a scalar value and just keep that at zero. If we chuck that into the low, and if we duplicate this down and we chuck in a value of one, this can be our high value like this. And for our low value, we're going to want to create a parameter so we can promote that there. And if we rename this to min distance and put a default value of 350, and if we duplicate this down, and make this the max distance. And for now, we can put in 2500. And we chuck that into the high. And out of our remap, if we saturate this for safety, just give ourselves a bit more space here. And finally, if we create a lerp like this here, 
we can just give ourselves a little bit more control over this effect. So out of the A, if we create a parameter, and if we call this min distance influence, and if we chuck in a 1 for this, and if we duplicate this down, and make sure this is max distance influence, and again, just keep that at 1 and chuck that into the B. Now the cool thing about this is that we can multiply this with our outline amount. And what's essentially going to happen is that when the actor is its furthest point away from our values that we've set, it's going to be multiplied by this guy. And when the actor is closer to the value that we've set with our min, it's going to be multiplied by this guy. So just before we go back into our scene, if we chuck these guys into a group called distance, like that, and we apply and save. If we go back into our scene and have a look at our instance, we turn these guys on, and we turn our minimum down to 0.25, let's say and our maximum to 2. If we get further away, our outline is actually getting a little bit bigger. And if we go really, really close, our outline gets a little bit smaller. Now, if you want it to be consistent, uh, you can just return these to a value of 1, so that it's always the same, regardless of where you are. And obviously you can tweak these values with the distance as well, so that it works perfectly for your project. Cool. So let's jump back into our material. And let's just add a little comment here and say distance. And if we give ourselves a little bit of space down here, the last thing we're going to want to add is a little bit of noise to our outline. And this is just going to let it wobble a little bit and give it a bit of an artistic flair. So if we right click and create a texture object, and I'm going to set this to the offset noise distance fields texture, which should be default in your engine. If we drag out, create a texture sample, like this. And before we add anything to the right here, just scroll over to the left. We're going to control this texture by the world position. And what this is going to allow us to do is when the actor moves around the level, the outline itself will animate and wobble around. So if we right click and create a world position, and we're going to want to make sure this is excluding material shader offsets like this. And all we need to do is divide, make a parameter here. And let's call this noise scale. And set this to 300 for now. And chuck this into your UV channel. Now on the right hand side, we just want to add a couple of nodes for control. So if we drag out and create a power. And out of the power, we just want to create a parameter here. And let's call this noise ball off and set this to 2. And after the power, if we multiply, let's create a parameter for this guy too. And let's call this noise influence. And let's chuck in 4 for the default for that. And after this, if we create a saturate, and then a named reroute declaration node, like this. And let's call this noise. Now all we need to do is add this into our calculation. And the cool thing about the name declaration nodes is that we can call them whenever we like. So if we come back up here to our calculation, and we right click and type in noise, just make sure it's the named reroute nodes one right there. And if we drag out and lerp like this, and if we push this along like here, just give ourselves a bit of space. 
we're going to want to replace our outline amount with the lerp like this. And if we move our outline amount over here, we want to chuck this guy into the A, and we want to divide this by a certain amount. You can create a parameter for this, but I'm just going to put in 20 for now. And we're going to chuck this into the B, just like this. Now what's happening here is that our noise material is going to control how much our outline will push out or in. So in the darkest patches, it will use our default outline amount, and in the brightest patches, it will be divided by 20, which will push portions of our outline inwards, giving us a sort of wobbly effect. Now to go one further than this, if we go up here, give ourselves a bit of space again, we can also add it to our mask. So if we right click and create a switch, and we'll call this include noise in opacity. Now if false, we're going to use our default calculation here. But if true, we're going to get our noise. One minus it, which will invert it. And then if we multiply this by our two-sided sign, like this, and chuck this into true, and then our switch into the opacity mask, we should be good to go. So if we apply and save, and go into our scene, and we have a play about with our material here, you should already see a sort of noise effect going on here. Um, let's have a go. So you can control the scale of it, so if it's more or less, it looks kind of cool. And if you pull the guy around, you'll see it's kind of animating around, which is really nice. i just put them back to default. And if we tick on our opacity, you'll see it actually cuts out little bits. It might need a little bit more influence going on there. There we go. Which is pretty cool. Now there are some pros and cons of using this process over a post-process sort of outline effect. One of the positives is that you're using the geometry for the outline itself, giving you really accurate results and a super crisp line with no need for custom depth or any depth issues. So you can layer it up and put it behind objects with no issues at all. Another pro to this effect is how easy it is to apply to things. You can either just click on an object and set the overlay material like this with no issue, or you can just do it in blueprints. One example is if we go into our level blueprint here, and drag in our actor, like this. And if we drag out here and set overlay, set overlay material, like this, you can just set your material in here. And that can be done on begin play, or it can be triggered via another blueprint if you like. One of the main downsides of this effect is that it's actually quite expensive in comparison to a post-process material. When you add an overlay material to any actor, it adds another draw call to the render pipeline. Which isn't a problem when it's one or two actors, that's fine. However, if you start to add this to all of the actors in a scene, you're essentially going to be doubling up the draw calls of an actor, and therefore slowing down your render pipeline. A post-process outline only draws once, whereas this effect will draw for each individual actor. Another negative is that the quality of this effect really depends on the quality of the model. If we select this guy here, and we force its LODs to a higher level, let's say this or this, you'll start to notice it gets really jagged. And that's because the outline is using the geometry at hand. So depending on your project, that might be an issue. But yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And with that said, I'll see you guys there. Bye.